I, for one, that why everybody gets excited about the American Revolution. Right. And they talk about the Boston Tea Party uh -huh. and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and here was a bunch of people complaining about the price of tea yeah. in Texas. Now, 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 we were in the process of being changed from one slave master to the other slave master. Yeah. And, and so these were essentially, and, 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 and it, didn't really, uh, uh, it didn't really open up any freedom to white people uh -huh. because only the property owners Right. could vote in that election. Right. It certainly didn't open up any freedom to women because women still couldn't vote and still couldn't participate and it just totally shut us out. So that's what you're talking about. And these are the same kind of people who are now organizing the Tea Party. Yeah. They're upset because the complexion of the fellow in the White House has changed. Right? I mean, they're, they're upset about that. I, you know, the most uh, astute uh, uh, supporters of the empire understand that that change doesn't hurt them at all. And in fact, some of them believe that it really helps them because they had gone bankrupt on the international scale and that people didn't believe in them anymore. So they figured if they put a chocolate color fellow in there, then all of a sudden what would happen is that they would get a better response on the international level. But there are people who are so superficial, so tied into white supremacy, that just the change of the color of the fella in the White House yeah. has got them all upset. Yeah. Right? So we know what we're up against. You know, Mississippi, one of the women who sat on the Supreme Court, I think this, this is the Supreme Court that suspended me. In fact, she wrote the opinion, I think, that suspended me, uh, uh, a bill. And, and, and she, she left the Supreme Court of Mississippi so that she could go and organize the Tea Party in Mississippi. Right? So this is the kind of quote unquote, we still got the Dred Scott decision working actively in the courts. But what is so wonderful about what we do, and, and, and I'm going to get right to the point, because I know we have to move on at these uh, conferences, is that, see, what it is, is that one of the things that perpetuate oppression is that oppression is dippled out into little doses and sometimes big doses, but the different people in different places. So a person in Detroit who's right now dealing with a shrinking city mm -hmm. where they once had some kind of electoral power as far as black people were concerned, don't recognize that their problem of not being able to live in a home or losing their home is connected to the same problem that we got in Mississippi. They don't understand it. They don't understand it. They don't understand it. They don't understand in New York when they talk about the labor problems they have in New York that that's related to the problem that we have in trying to organize labor in the Nissan plant right outside of Jackson, Mississippi. And so they don't realize that the whole spectrum of white supremacy shoots up from the South and it shoots up from the occupation of the African nation in the South and the Indian nations in the South and that they contaminate the whole U.S. empire with the shadow of white supremacy. They don't understand that. And so what it is, is that we got a lot of people telling a lot of individual stories. They don't understand that there is one big story that defines the whole problem. And so what Sister Jeremy Hill and the folks who work with her and your good work has done is help to put the problem in a situation where we can come here at a conference and we can talk about it, and we get up here on this platform, and all of a sudden we realize that we're talking about the same thing. Right? This is what we realize. We're just talking about a different aspect, a different reflection of the same problem. And then we drag out this document, this, this, this unique document that nobody ever paid attention to for so many years, called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Amazing, that. it? See, we were all stuck on reading the Constitution, which they didn't even really believe in themselves. Right? A, a Constitution which guaranteed slavery for a period of time. And then a Constitution that was interpreted for another hundred years by people who didn't believe that you should be able to go to school with white people. Right? That's, what, that's the kind of thing, that old dog document that they call the Constitution. And so, it, and, and so what we have to realize that before the Constitution, there is a universal declaration of human rights. There are, you, there are certain understandings, which all of them are not recorded, that people in this world understand are the human rights of folks. And so coming here to talk about those things fuels us, unites us, makes us understand the different ways that we have to go out and fight.
And so we become a common struggle as opposed to a lot of fractured struggles. All right. And we have a lot of ways we reflect that. We have the Selma March that we do once a year. We have various other things that we do all over the country where we're really talking about the same thing. All right. And we have to continue this message of unity. We got to build on it. And we got to make sure that we take it to the streets. Now, see, I'm sitting here talking to you now. I come, by the way, on behalf of the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and the New African People's Organization. But now I always add to that the People's Assembly of Jackson, Mississippi. Right? And, every now and, then, I'll, and every now and then, I'll even tell you that I'm more than two councilmen of Jackson, Mississippi. trying to see which foot's going to get kicked out the first. Right? So I'm not quite sure about that because, you know, of course, we don't control the city council of Jackson, Mississippi. Right. The city council is a battleground in Jackson, Mississippi. Right. The government of Jackson, Mississippi is a battleground. Yeah. It's not a place we control. The people in this city council, a lot of them look like us, but they're not us, right? You have to That's understand right. that. Right. A lot of people in the government of Jackson, Mississippi look like us, but they're not like us. And the same thing is true with very, we got more black elected officials in Mississippi than anywhere in the empire. We got more than anywhere in the empire. But that doesn't mean that we have more power. In fact, I, you know, we, we have people who often argue, well, how can you live in Mississippi? Or they say, how can you live in Alabama? Or how can you live here or there? And I, you know, I often wonder, you know, what it is, you know, slaves on the plantation arguing about what plantation <laughs> Somewhat ridiculous kind of argument. It's somewhat ridiculous kind of argument. 